Hey, it's Rick Kettner here, and in this episode, we're gonna go through three practical insights from This Is Marketing by Seth Godin. This book is all about how to create a movement, how to build momentum with a new product, service, or idea. The reality is, the marketplace out there is a very noisy place to try to introduce something new. And marketing is all about cutting through that noise so that you can create the maximum impact. And this book explains how to do that more effectively. So if you're a founder, entrepreneur, marketer, or anybody else interested in building momentum with a new product, service, or idea, then I recommend that you consider picking up a copy of This Is Marketing by Seth Godin. With that said, let's dive into three of my favorite insights from the book, beginning with insight number one, the five steps for effective marketing. Much of what is considered marketing today is really just advertising, buying people's attention to sell products and services. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with advertising, in fact, it's a topic we're gonna come back to later in this episode, advertising is not marketing. Marketing is about creating change. It's about helping people discover, understand, and share new solutions, whether those are products, services, ideas, or anything new like that. So this book, it outlines a five-step process for effective marketing. And those steps include, number one, create a thing worth making with a story worth telling and a contribution worth talking about. Number two, design and build it in a way that a few people will particularly benefit from and care about. Number three, tell a story that matches the built-in narrative and dreams of that tiny group, the smallest viable market. And number four, the step that everybody gets excited about, spread the word. Number five, often overlooked, show up regularly consistently and generously for years and years to organize and lead and build confidence in the change you seek to make. Now that's a lot to take in, but as I was reading through those five steps, you might've been caught off guard by my mention of tiny group or smallest viable market. And you might be wondering, why are we focusing on a small market instead of a broad market where there are a lot more potential customers and perhaps a lot more money to be made? So with that question in mind, let's continue on to insight number two. Start with the smallest viable market. The mistake that many people make is they start by trying to target a large, broad market of potential customers. They wanna capture as much revenue as possible and they believe by targeting the largest market possible, that's gonna give them the best chance for success. But the problem is this isn't the right way to build momentum. Even if your long-term goal is to eventually reach that wider market, even if you have a very strong belief that your product or your service has broad mainstream appeal, it's not an effective strategy because change is very hard. It's very difficult to catch people's attention and even more difficult to make them care about something that is new. They already have strong preferences, established habits, and are often loyal to specific brands. And just generally speaking, people tend to prefer existing proven solutions over something that is new, even if the existing solution is inferior in some key way. They much prefer the tried and true proven solution versus something that is new and potentially untested. So it's very important to start with the smallest viable market a group that is gonna benefit most from whatever it is that you've created. So small enough that you have a clear understanding of their needs and desires and how your product or service can benefit them, but large enough that it is viable. That word is very important, smallest viable market. You need to have enough potential customers to help you build initial momentum because as the book explains, 
Ironically enough, it's this small initial audience that's gonna allow you to build momentum and eventually reach a much larger audience. They're the ones that are most likely to value what you've created, to use it, and to eventually recommend it to others. And this is what allows you to build momentum and reach that larger audience. So with that in mind, let's continue on to insight number three. Build a funnel to attract evangelists. The total lifetime value of an average customer rarely exceeds the total cost of acquiring a customer through something like paid advertising because advertising is getting more and more competitive. There are all kinds of other costs involved in building out your marketing collateral and your sales funnel. And when you add all of this up together, rarely is the total cost of acquiring the average customer through this mechanism worth it in the end. So with this in mind, the goal of your marketing funnel shouldn't be simply to attract average customers. Instead, you should think of your sales and marketing funnel as a mechanism for attracting brand advocates, the kinds of customers that are gonna love what you offer, be more likely to use your products and services, and ultimately be more likely to share and recommend your solution to other people. So. As the book explains, the most effective marketers don't rely entirely on direct advertising as a method of growth. Instead, what they do is they use paid advertising as a way to pour fuel on the fire when it comes to things like word of mouth referral and brand advocacy. The end result is that you want more and more of your sales to not come directly from advertising, but rather to come from word of mouth referral, brand advocacy, and other things like that that are supported by paid advertising. They're accelerated by advertising. So even though it is important, as the book mentions, to really optimize your advertising, to make sure you're not spending too much when it comes to advertising, much more important than that is to make sure that you're advertising to the right people. You're advertising to people that are more likely to love your product, to use your product, and to ultimately recommend it to other people. And then it's very important from there that you make it as easy as possible for them to enjoy your product and share it with others. Anyway, those are three of my favorite insights from the book. Let me quickly recap all three for you. Number one, the five steps for effective marketing. Number two, start with the smallest viable market. And number three, build a funnel to attract evangelists. Now, as is always the case, there is so much more in the book that we simply cannot cover in this short format, including in this case, how to use tension to create change, why status is the engine of our culture and how to leverage that, and many more ideas when it comes to making change happen. So if you're an entrepreneur, founder, marketer, or anybody else that wants to build momentum with a new product, service, or idea, I recommend that you consider picking up a copy of This Is Marketing by Seth Godin. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered here, let me know in the comment section below. If you're listening to the audio edition, I'll include a link in the show notes that'll take you over to the video edition where you can participate in the comment section. If you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.